are facing more and more elderly patient also with an indication for cystectomy. And for example, in Germany, there is an increase in, uh, continuous increase in the life expectancy. And these are the data of the year 2016. So the mean expectation, life expectation for a female uh, is uh, 83.2 years and for a male, uh, 78.4 years. Urothelial carcinoma of the bladder, on the other hand, is the fourth common tumor entity in males and the eighth common tumor entity in females. And the age at radical cystectomy, uh, up to 50% of the patients we see are over 70 years. We already discussed it and we heard that elderly patients are sicker and have more complication. And this is just an example in the literature. And there was also a literature overview uh, containing 42 publications who found exactly the same. However, also this was already mentioned. There might be a better outcome in high volume centers. We have a couple of options when it comes to urinary diversion. Um, I mentioned already the uridocutaneostomy as the simplest form. We can do an ileal conduit, we can do a colonic conduit, like a sigmoid conduit, or if the patient had an irradiation, a high urinary diversion using the transverse colon. And also for continent diversion, we have a couple of options. The ileal neoplader, which is uh, the most common form of urinary diversion for males. Ileocecal pouches, just as an example, because I trained in mines, the mines pouch with the appendix stoma, or the ileum invagination uh, as a uh, continent efferent segment, or the transverse pouch, again, in irradiated patients, or a sigma rectum pouch. So ureterocutaneostomy is, is a simple operative technique, the simplest one of what I have shown you. Um, there is some evidence in the literature that it has a shorter uh, time of surgery, a shorter hospital stay, no difference concerning quality of life when compared to patients with other types of urinary diversion. And of course, one of the big arguments is no need for bowel anastomosis and thus less diarrhea and flatulence in a long-term outcome. However, has this operation performed in the elderly also less complications? When we talk about complications uh, in cystectomy patients, there are a couple of classifications to report morbidity. And you may remember that last year uh, I re gave a presentation on that. So the most famous one is the clavian dindo classification. It's a grading of the perioperative complications. However, it's a categorization of the highest complication. So it focuses on the highest complication. And we have five grades with subgrades. And uh, the, the same institution developed at least the comprehensive complication index. It's based on the CDC. However, there is an integration of all complication into a linear composite score from 0 to 100 death. And each CDC grade has a corresponding CCI score. And thus, this is much better if you want to assess the cumulative morbidity. So we went back to the series I presented last year to have a closer look on the impact of urinary diversion. And these were 506 radical cystectomies performed between January 2009 and June 2017. 79% were male, 21% females. And here you see the age. And you clearly can see here, if you make the cut off at 70, a big part of these people were older than 70. And here you can see the age-adjusted Carlson uh, index of the whole collective. And you also can see that we had quite some morbid people in this group. So looking to the Clavian-Dindo classification, at least, and I presented that last year, 97% of the patients had one complication. But, and this is the good news, the majority of patients had grade one or two, 
complications. And you see that the severe complications, the, the percentage is quite low. Reoperations uh, we had to do in 5.7%, and the main reason were wound related. Readmissions 4%, and 50% due to infection, and 21% gastrointestinal. So let's look closer to the urinary diversion. So 87 patients, or 17%, received the ureterocutaneostomy, an ileal or colonic conduit, 283, that means 56%, and only 27% the continent urinary diversion. And we went, when we look to the age, then you see there was a statistical difference between those patients receiving a ureterocutaneostomy and the others. So the mean age in this group was 76 compared to 71 for a conduit diversion and 61 for continent diversion. There was no difference concerning gender and there was no difference concerning the BMI. So to summarize, patients who received the ureterocutaneostomy were older, gender, BMI, there was no difference. We also had to look on the comorbidity and this is the chronic kidney disease, stadium one to two, uh, compared to stadium three to five. And again, we found a higher percentage of patients receiving a ureterocutaneostomy that had stadium three to five, if you compare that to the conduit or continent diversion group, and also this was statistically significant. <laughs> We also looked to previous pelvic or abdominal surgery, and again, the highest percentage was in the group of ureterocutaneostomy. 44% had previous abdominal surgery, and also previous irradiation or pelvic abdominal uh, irradiation, 16%, and also this was statistically significant. And as we would expect, also the uh, Morbidity was much higher. We had here an ACCI, a mean of five compared to three and two with the other groups. So also this was statistically significant. So to summarize this slide, the patient who received the ureterocutaneostomy had more often real insufficiency. They had much more comorbidities. They had more previous abdominal surgeries and irradiation. So let's look to the operative data. The mean duration of surgery in a whole group was 278 minutes. And when we look to the group who received the ureterocutaneostomy, it was only 184, and this was statistically significant, compared to 275 for a conduit and 322 for a continent diversion. Mean hospital stay, remember, these were the sick old patients at a mean 13 days compared to 15 and 15 for the other groups, again, statistically significant. This seems to be long, but when we compare it to the data of, on Germany, so the, the, the mean stay for a cystectomy in Germany is 25.1 days. So it's not too bad. Looking to pathology, we also could see that 68% of the patient receiving a ureterocutaneostomy had an advanced disease, PT3 and or PN positive, and also this was statistically significant. <coughs> so to summarize, the UCN patients had a shorter duration of surgery, shorter hospitalization time, and more advanced tumors. So we would expect that this group has a much higher complication rate than the other two groups. But that was not the case. So when we compared the complications and looking to the comprehensive complication index, that, that means counting all the complications together. So we had an index of 30 compared to 21 for ileal conduit and 21 for continent diversion. And looking to major complications with respect to the CDC classification, that means greater than 3B, again, there was no statistically significant difference, even though it seems that this here might be a bit higher. So we clearly could say that there was no difference in the 30-day complication rate despite more comorbidities and higher age of ureterocutaneostomy patients. 
And then we looked a little bit closer what types of complications we have seen. And you see the ureterocutaneostomy is the blue area. This here, the orange one, is ileal colonic conduit. And this is the continent urinary diversion. And you see, because you have more morbidities, you had more bleeding, pulmonary complication, and cardiac complication in the group of ureterocutaneostomy where you had more gastrointestinal complications and infections in the ileal uh, and colonic conduit group. So to summarize these findings, strump embolic and neurologic complications were equal in all three groups. Gastrointestinal and infectious complication highest after conduit, lowest bound healing complication in the ureterocutaneostomy, but highest cardiac and pulmonary complications and bleeding. So looking to the literature, there is one study out of the year 2020, uh, 2015, um, 256 patients over the age of 70, mean age 79, and 80% received urinary diversion with bowel and 20% ureterocutaneostomy. Those patients receiving a ureterocutaneostomy had shorter OR time and shorter time in the intensive care unit and also lower complication rates. So this is in concordance to what we found. Severe medical and surgical complications were less common after a ureterocutaneostomy. However, when you look to the long-term <laughs> mortality, then you clearly see an increase. And I mean, this is clear. These are patients with a high comorbidity. And the reason to die is not just only the cancer. It's also due to the comorbidities. What are the late-term complications? Abscess formation, ureteral necrosis, and of course, stoma stenosis in up to 60 to 70% uh, with upper tract dilation and leading to pyelonephritis. What could you do to, to uh, avoid stoma stenosis is omentum wrapping. This is described, and also to create an inverted stoma formation. Are conduits better? And I like to refer to quite an old publication, but a very good publication from uh, Madersbacher out of the year 2003, because they had a long-term follow-up of 98 months. And you see that within the first year, you have 45% complications after an ILL conduit, which is increasing over the years. So after 15 years, you can expect complications in 94% of your patients. So it's not really better. And this is a publication from Pusha out of the year 2008, and he compared ileal conduit versus colonic conduit versus ureterocutaneostomy. So here you see the revision rate. It was highest in the ileal conduits in the perioperative uh, period. Short time, it was highest with the colonic conduit. In long term, again, here the ileal conduit. So the ileal conduit had the highest revision rate, and the lowest revision rate was the ureterocutaneostomy. So to summarize, increase in life ex expectancy will lead to a higher number of elderly patients with BCA and an indication for cystectomy. The elderly patients have more comorbidities and thus a higher complication rate. Ureterocutaneostomy as a urinary diversion performed in these patients has a shorter OR time and hospital stay, less wound healing complications, infectious and gastrointestinal complication. And therefore, we like the ureterocutaneostomy, and I think it's really a valuable and useful diversion in elderly patients. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>